Hello, we are here for a book review of the art of racing in the rain. Meet the dog who will show the world how to be human. So, I need to find the passages that are good, but I just want to make a big, um, I just want to make an overview. First of all, when you're reading a book, it's always about the reader. You are reading the book. So, there's no objective book report. There's no objective book review. There's always, it's about you. So I'm surrounded here by these beautiful uh, dogs and absolutely affects me. Uh, this novel is from the point of view of a dog. We, and it has some really beautiful quotes. Um, it says here, with your mind, power, your determination, your instinct and experience, experience as well, you can fly very high. So this is sort of like a wannabe Jonathan Livingston Seagull with four legs. And it talks, it does uh, express a lot of knowledge about dogs and about their senses being much more attuned, much more, they can pick up much more than human beings, whether it's the heartbeat, where it's things that, things that people don't pick up and how sensitive their senses are. Um, in sharp contrast with how insensitive people are. They can put loud music in a public area, for instance. The dogs can hear it so much more. Um, so it's a really, so this book, I will say three things. First of all, there's a lot of knowledge about dogs and it's good in that way. The second thing, there's a, there are a few things. There's a relationship between a man and his dog and a dog and a family. And there's uh, confronting a disease, a horrible, incurable disease, and relationship within a family, and how to deal with in-laws at such times. And then there's also something that for me is not a good decision of the writer. He also put in a sexual, uh, um, sexual uh, uh, how, how should I put it? I wouldn't say harassment, but um, an encounter with a minor, with a young girl. Uh, there's an accusation and how that affects the life of the men from the point of view of the being the one the man being accused and since so many reports about abuse go unreported I find it in poor taste like I don't think it was a good decision but it definitely I can see why he chose it because of the plot so this talks about evolution, how dogs got to be dogs, and a dog named Enzo, and his owner is Danny, and he's a race car driver, and he has a family, he marries Eve, Eve becomes very ill, Eve has a, they have a daughter together called Zoe, which means life, and uh, just the whole he's realizing his dream there's this dream of becoming a race car driver and for anyone who's seen i don't remember the name of the movie it's ferrari versus uh ford is it the name it was a fantastic movie about race car drivers yeah. it was very well done in my opinion and i really got into that topic which is absolutely not a topic i would otherwise get even a little bit close to but there is a repetition of the philosophy that you think what is in common, what is the common thread between a dog and a race car driver? And seemingly nothing. And then you realize it's living the moment. And how um, living the moment actually has a good uh, association. Because in order to achieve a goal, you need to live the moment. If you're thinking about the past, like a car, a race car driver cannot think about where he's been. He cannot think even about a meter before him. He's focused on reaching the goal. And in life, that's the same. And so this dog loves racing. There's a lot of, there's a, a lot of cruel scenes where there's insensitivity to dogs. And that's definitely very painful for me personally to read it. And there's a beautiful story um, about uh, Mongolia. Mongolia, I didn't know. I thought Mongolia was not dog friendly actually.
because I wanted to live there. I got a job off for one time, this is a true story. And I heard the dogs are not treated as pets there. So this is, um, the story about Mongolia is that in Mongolia, uh, there's a ritual, that's what it says. I'm not sure that actually it is. I really need to research if it's really true. But in Mongolia, when a dog is, um, when a dog is um, dead, they bury him in a way and they put a food in his mouth so he can go to the next life. They believe in reincarnation, so they bury the dog uh, with um, good food and the, then he goes on to the next reincarnation um, and he has a, like he will be a human being maybe. Ah, there it is. In Mongolia, when a dog dies, he's buried high in the hills and he cannot walk on his grave. The dog's master whispers in the dog's ear his wishes that the dog will return as a man in the next life. When his tail, then, this is a bit, his tail is cut off and put beneath his head and a piece of meat or fat is placed in his mouth to sustain his soul on its journey. Before he's reincarnated, Needed, the dog's soul is free to travel the land to run across the high desert plains for as long as it would like. Um, so it says here, I learned that from a program on National Geographic Channel. I believe it is true. Not all dogs return as men, they say. Only those who are ready. I am ready. Um, it just brings tears to my eyes because... In reincarnation, being a human being is the the highest highest level. And when we look around us, being a human being is not always the highest level. Human beings are not nice to other human beings a lot of times. Um, as a, I make this report, we have in USA reports of racism. And when you think about it, isn't it ridiculous that human beings are nasty to other human beings because of where they come from? Uh, I believe dogs also have this tendency to not like other dogs based on race or any sort of characteristics, gender. But human beings are supposed to be educated not to do that. And it's sad when they're not. So having said that, there's something called specious speciesism and that is when you treat a species like a dog or a cat or, or, or a cow or a chicken in, a, in an abusive way because you think they are less than you. Actually, this corresponds in today's portion of the Bible read in, by Jews all over the world, the, the religious Jews. There are sacrifices in the temple, and I never understood why Jews sacrificed animals. I was told that it's a higher level because they used to sacrifice children or human beings. So the Jews at the time, we have to think thousands of years ago, they didn't sacrifice um, human beings. They sacrificed animals. So is that a stage? Is that a better stage? Animals that are helpless? Um to sacrifice an animal that cannot defend itself, just to grab a chicken or a cow and to sacrifice it as an offering to the gods. And even, I read back the story of um, the first murder, Cain and Abel, and the one who made the sacrifice of meat, he's, he was beloved, and the one who made a sacrifice of vegetables was not beloved or harvest vegetables is not so what what does it mean the bible doesn't like vegetarians so this is absolutely against animals um and and this book talks about how animals are treated so badly by some people who don't understand it of course not the owner um but just having an owner owner is bad so let's focus on the race car metaphor so as i said the race car metaphor is like a dog because the dog lives the present moment and that's why we, we love dogs because they really enjoy um, the moment it says here a driver must have faith in his talent his judgment the judgment of those around him physics the driver must have faith in his, his car his tires his brakes himself so this is sort of I guess the art of uh, motorcycles 
as Zen. Um, this is a metaphor of life. Um, the race is long. It is better to drive within oneself and finish the race behind the others than it is to drive too hard and crash. Interesting. I'm against racing. Racing anything. I'm not in a competition with anyone. That's why I love yoga. I'm not in a competition, so I think this aspect has not been addressed because um, competition does the horrible things to human being. I believe. And I don't like any sort of races. Um, but this is a beautiful story. And I just have a problem with the choices the writer made to bring in a sexual harassment against a teenager story. Um, and I just think there's too much stuff going on in this book. And I think less is more. I tend to accumulate books, for instance, so it's funny that I say less is more, but I do believe that it's really better to write a book that has less going on and to focus more on the details. There's enough going on here, and I think it's an American tendency as well as an Israeli tendency to just crowd it together and just um, see how people are, you know, they're just crowding. I'm not a crowd person. I'm a very individualistic person, which is weird because I work in education, but then I like to have it structured and I like to have structure when I'm with children. I don't like to have a mess. I don't like to have children go all over the, the place. And I think the same thing goes for books. We need to have a structure, which is why I haven't ventured into writing my own book. A lot of structure. Otherwise, the reader doesn't know where he's going. And I think in this book, I'm lost, but there's too much going on. So I wouldn't say it's Jonathan Livingston Seagull, because Jonathan Livingston Seagull did not write a book about a seagull that has like a sexual harassment case, comes into a family. There's too much stuff going on here. And the whole purpose is to get this, you know, drama going on. It's been made into a film. And it's also tragic the way people treat each other. Maybe that was why the writer chose to bring in the sexual harassment the story. How can you treat a selfish man? But I tend to think that a teenage girl doesn't really make up stuff. It's maybe the adults around her. And I think that would have been a better choice to stress that the girl didn't choose to accuse anyone. But it's the adults around her who, whose selfishness dictated this behavior. So I have a problem with this choice. Um, I think it's very painful, but I think the description between the in-laws and, 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 and Danny, who's the hero of the story, is the main character, the race car driver, who's fighting for his daughter, and the way the in-laws are so selfish, and they don't think about the relationship with a fa of a father and daughter. It's, it's just cruel, but it's also very realistic, I believe. In many cases in family, people just don't think about other people. They're very selfish, which, again, the dog stands out even more as a selfless, a selfless creature that just is always looking out for the human being. And it's so odd that human beings can be so selfish and mean to each other. It's just the way it is. We just have to accept it. I have... I've really given up trying to understand the psychology of human beings because there are books written about an ideal human being, especially religious books or philosophical books. There's an ideal and the reality is so far away from that. So I recommend reading this book but not taking it too seriously or maybe just focusing on the dog part and learning what it's like to be a dog. After I read this book, I read it on a bus and I just ran home to walk the dogs because I just felt I felt the dogs on a much deeper level because when you read a book from the point of view of anyone, you identify with the character and you feel them more, which is why this is the strength of, of empathy built through reading and it's not something you can get from watching because it's such a deeper level because your mind has to recreate everything. You're reading words and your mind has to recreate the scene, which is why reading is so helpful. Your mind is activated so many levels. And I think the whole
whole point of literature is compassion and trying to walk in the shoes of someone else or in the paws of someone else. Definitely read this, but be aware of the flaw, the flaws of this book. It's very easy to read if you're not a native English reader. The vocabulary is not too difficult. And you can watch I'm I'm curious to see how the film portrayed, um, how the film, uh, what were the choices of the film. But again, I really think it's always, the book is always better than the film. Always, almost always. Maybe Forrest Gump would be an exception. I've never read the book, but I love that film. If you have really good actors, uh, then you can't beat the film. If you have really good actors, talented character actors like Forrest Gump, I can't imagine beating the book. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine that beating the book, sorry. Uh, my mind is sort of stirring. So I'm reading this on a Saturday in a park. Uh, this is a park for you. They're sitting in their own little boots. There are a few dogs. Those are young children. Those are loud and the kids are on their level. They don't really have a sense of what they're supposed to do. A lot of times kids here are very lost. They just let them free and let them do whatever they want. And they don't have any limits. In sharp contrast to other cultures I've been into in Europe. Maybe are the opposite extremes because they have too many limits. They're not allowed to run free. I wish there was the happy medium. And it's the same with dogs. You know, human beings need limits. We need to have, like, I give myself limits. I, I give myself missions, even when I don't have a structured day. I try to give myself structure through yoga, through walking, through giving myself uh, things I have to do and accomplish. And I believe children always need to have some sort of goals and just to let them uh, run free without any anything to do with difficulties and structure. And also they need to learn how to treat other people with kindness. And I believe this is something lacking in Israeli society especially and maybe in American society as well. Uh, judging from the news. But I think we can learn kindness from animals because really they don't they don't have racism. In a way, you know, I've heard somebody I overheard somebody said, Oh my dog doesn't like African people or I thought that was really horrible to say that. A dog doesn't distinguish race or ethnic origin. What they do distinguish is fear. If somebody has fear, they will attack them because fear for dogs is threatening. When they sense somebody's afraid of them, they're afraid. And then they feel they might be attacked. So if an African person, and rightfully so, dogs in African cultures are dangerous, they have rabies or whatever, uh, I can imagine if an African person expresses fear, especially those coming from Africa, uh, the dog will be aggressive towards it. Or anyone, religious people, or whatever, that don't have um, experience with animals or dogs. So be aware of it. Animals are not racist at all. This is what makes them great. They really see the human being. But beware of that. They're not like godly creatures. They, they, they have very very sharp senses and they pick up your heartbeat, your breathing and your sweat and they can smell, their sense of smell is incredible. Um, so be aware of that when you have a dog. They're very sensitive to your energy. If you're nervous, they're going to be nervous. If you're afraid, they're going to be afraid. And um, this book, I think it would have been better that it would have stressed the relationship between the dog and his owner more, but it's a great book. And especially the scene where the dog wants to give evidence in court because he witnessed a crime and it takes me back to crimes where dogs are the only witness and this this wish that a dog could speak but in a way it's a blessing they can't because they have nonverbal language um, and in a way their nonverbal language speaks speaks immensely and we just have to know their language dogs have very clear language we need to learn. Cats have a very clear language. All animals have their own languages. Just because they don't use words doesn't mean they don't have languages. And that's that was important for me. And I also don't like, there's a little bit of a Disney, I don't know what is the word exactly, where you imitate when an animal takes on a human character, characteristics, and I sort of do not enjoy that. And it's sort of, 
would have been a better book if the dog would have been a little bit less human. And also, I think every animal or every creature should be happy with what they are, not strive to be something else. And the question is, is reincarnation, being reincarnated as a human being, really such a, such a gift? Peace, I love. And read this book, but as I said, focus on the good parts, on the quotes about focusing on a target and in the rain and beautiful descriptions of Seattle, Washington. A uh, place I, a friend of mine moved to, and it just sounds really beautiful, as well as challenging weather-wise. And I feel really blessed that we have the sun here, so much sun. Peace, I love, and uh, definitely read this book, enjoy it, but be aware of its flaws as well. Like human beings, be aware of the human being as a flawed creature, be aware dogs also are flawed, we're all flawed.